So, what is the entropy change for the universe? Well, the entropy change for the universe can be thought of as the entropy change of the system plus the entropy change of the surroundings. Since the entropy change of the system is not exactly equal to the entropy change of the surroundings, we have to include them both here. Now this is different than what we learned in Chem 1. In Chem 1, the enthalpy change of the universe would be zero. First law of thermodynamics, energy of the universe is constant. So any enthalpy change for the system is exactly equal and opposite to the enthalpy change of the surroundings, but it doesn't work that way for entropy. Because the entropy of the universe is constantly increasing, it is a combination of both of these, and both of these may be positive, both of these may be negative, one may be positive and the other negative. So that's how this works. This is a law. This is what we observe happening. We didn't decide this. The universe decided this. The entropy of the universe is constantly increasing, and it is a total of systems plus surroundings. And if you calculate a positive numerical value for the delta S of the universe, you're looking at a, a spontaneous process. If you calculate a delta S of the universe that is negative, you're looking at a non-spontaneous process. So see, we know how to calculate whether or not a process is spontaneous. All we have to do is calculate the entropy change for the universe. It's not as bad as it sounds. We see that the entropy change is related to the amount of heat over the temperature change. This is how entropy is defined. Delta S is equal to Q over T. Um, so for a system, delta S for the system is the Q of the system over the temperature. The delta S of the surroundings is the Q of the surroundings over the temperature. Since the delta H, the enthalpy change of the system, is exactly equal to the negative delta H of the surroundings, this is the first law of thermodynamics, any heat lost by the system is gained by the surroundings and vice versa, we can use this we can use this to um, calculate the delta S of the universe. Q is the symbol for heat, and so the delta S of the universe is the delta S of the system, plus the delta S of the surroundings is the Q of the surroundings divided by T. The Q of the surroundings is the delta H of the surroundings, which is the negative delta H of the system, so the delta S of the surroundings is equal to the negative delta H of the system, over T. If we plug that in, the delta S of the universe is equal to the delta S of the system minus the delta H of the system over T. This makes it a little less daunting because now I don't have to calculate anything for the entire surroundings. All I need are my enthalpy change for my system and my entropy change for my system. Often we have those numbers or often there is a way to calculate those. If I'm looking at a chemical reaction, we do have some uh, a, a toolbox full of values that allow us to calculate delta H's and delta S's for chemical reactions fairly straightforwardly. So it's not as daunting to talk about the delta S of the universe. But scientists realize that sometimes it is daunting to talk about the delta S of the universe. And so they came up, they devised a new thermodynamic parameter which includes delta S and delta H for the system. And this new parameter is called the delta G or the Gibbs free energy. Again, the, uh, or of course the delta symbol means the change in Gibbs free energy. So G stands for the Gibbs free energy, delta G is the change in Gibbs free energy, and delta G is defined as delta H minus T delta S. So the Gibbs free energy is defined as the enthalpy change minus the temperature in Kelvin times the delta S, the entropy change. It, the delta G of the system would be the delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system, and so on. So my subscripts would need to match for all of these. What the Gibbs free energy does is it allows us in one thermodynamic parameter to predict whether or not a process is spontaneous. Numerically speaking, if you calculate a delta G for a reaction or a process, if the delta G is negative, if the delta G is less than zero, you are looking at a spontaneous change. 
If the delta G is positive, if you're looking at a positive numerical value, then the reaction or the process is not spontaneous. All right, we'll do more with these calculations in a minute.